Welcome traders to the Tick Mill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 27th of April with me, Patrick Munley. Uh, as more and fresher estimates of the economic impact of the COVID-19 virus start to roll in, we will start to get a better picture of the full impact on the global economy. What may help to inform the picture will be further evidence on whether or not COVID-19 curves are flattening across the US and the world. So far, they are flattening uh, across all major regions, but not yet flat. Contingency planning for reopening parts of the economy in phases is prudent to undertake, but seems a little premature in terms of implementation at this stage, absent more convincing evidence that the curve counts are getting under control. Some experiments across the world may fail quickly where others succeed and the impact upon global confidence and supply chains is likely to be uneven. Um, specifically thinking about the US this week, let's see what, uh, what data we've got coming up. On Monday we have the April Dallas Fed Index. It's already at a record low and another soft print is expected. On Tuesday, we get March wholesale inventories, uh, which are set to continue to unwind. We also get April consumer confidence index, um, which in light of the lockdowns and social distancing is likely to uh, continue to suppress the consumer. We get April uh, Richmond Fed index as well, which is set really to collapse in April in line with the other regional surveys. On Wednesday, we'll get uh, the first reading of Q1 GDP annualized, which is, uh, which is an advanced reading and will show a contraction in US GDP. Uh, we'll also get the FOMC policy decision. Um, the FOMC have already pr provided a lot of support to the economy and they're likely going to need time to assess the impact of that support. Uh, following the FOMC decision, we'll get Fed uh, Chair Powell hosting a, uh, a press conference. On Thursday, we'll get um, March personal income and spending. Personal income and spending is likely to be squeezed as activity contracts and the labor market weakens. Uh, we round out the week on Friday in the US with uh, the April ISM manufacturing reading, which uh, is likely to be impeded by the supply disruptions and demand shock, uh, which is gonna probably dampen manufacturing. From a technical perspective, the uh, dollar index is expected to start the week on a, uh, a bearish footing here. We, we attempted to break higher on Friday and we got a, a key reversal day. We note that the uh, sentiment and the momentum studies are starting to roll over as well. So as we hold Friday's high, we can expect a, a, a break of um, Friday's lows to encourage further downside to target and retest the 99 level. However, if we do find support at the open this week for the dollar index and we take out Friday's high, then we'll be looking for a test of the 101.50 area, where I'll certainly be watching closely how we trade there, um, bearish reversal patterns, and I'll be looking to set short positions, ultimately targeting a move down to test the 96.40 to 96.20 area. Whilst we're talking about the dollar index, let's check in with gold. <clears throat> Gold uh, continued to find support at the symmetry swim, swing objective at the 1670 area, and we're now up looking for a retest of prior highs. Caution here as we could double top. Um, we do have some divergence developing, and if we do, I'd look for another pullback to test the 1640 area. However, once back here, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns, set long positions, ultimately targeting a test of the 1760 to 1769 area. However, if we take out the double top and trade through there, then I'd be looking for an equality objective up at the 1840 level before a more meaningful correction. Um, in the Eurozone this week, uh, data-wise, it's going to be uh, Wednesday when we receive the um, M3 money supply, which has turned up as easing comes online. We also get April economic confidence. PMIs have highlighted the dark shadow over those conditions, so I wouldn't expect uh, anything too promising in that reading. Uh, we'll also receive German April CPI, inflation poised for an abrupt slowdown in Germany. On Thursday, we'll get the unemployment rate, labor market to really significantly weaken in the coming months. We'll also get Q1 GDP in for the Eurozone as activity contracts sharply. 
And we'll also have the ECB policy decision and deposit rates. Uh, the ECB will call on fiscal authorities to do a lot more. We heard uh, Madame Lagarde speaking uh, last week where she said that uh, the European Union were in peril of doing too little too late. From a technical perspective, um, some good news out over the weekend with respect to Italy, who uh, didn't get a debt downgrade from, from S&P. So we likely see some further follow through to the upside in the euro dollar early in the week. Certainly if we can take out Friday's highs at the 108.30, then I'd be looking for a move up to back towards this 109.50, see how we trade there. But if we can get through there, then we still have this upside objective at uh, 112.25. If, however, we don't find support for the euro early in the week and we roll over, if we take out Friday's lows at 107.30, then I'm looking for a test of the price cycle lows down at 106.30, where once again, certainly be watching for any bullish reversal patterns to set long positions uh, to play for, uh, play for a corrective move to the upside. In the UK, uh, first port of call is going to be Tuesday, uh, where we get April nationwide house prices, significant headwinds obviously developing uh, for the housing market in the UK. Um, the next data of note then is really going to be uh, Friday's um, net mortgage lending, where credit is poised for a major contraction across the board. However, from a technical perspective, we have Boris Johnson returning to number 10 on Monday and we likely see a, an uptick in the in the sterling. We've held the symmetry swing support at this 123 area. And if we can get through the uh, 124 resistance, then I'd be looking for a move up to test the 78.6% uh, retracement of the entire crisis, crisis decline at this 128 handle. And just above there, we have the yearly pivot at 129. Certainly watching how we trade in this area as uh, bearish reversal patterns will be an opportunity to set shorts. Uh, but certainly at the beginning of the week, looking for a breakthrough on Friday's highs for long positions to trade up into that 127, 128 target zone. In Japan, um, we get Tuesday, we have, uh, oh sorry, actually Monday, we get the BOJ policy rate decision. Uh, monetary focus will be on asset purchase programs and what additional stimulus the BOJ may add. Then on Tuesday, we get March job uh, applicant ratio. Recent falls point to rising slack in the labor market. And then on Thursday, we'll get industrial production out of Japan. And in line with the broader contraction in economic activity, we'll be expecting a, uh, a depressed reading there. From a technical perspective, uh, the dollar yen continues to tr trade in a contracting range. Whilst we hold this 109.50 as resistance, I'm looking for a move down through uh, the prior lows at 106.80 to ultimately test into the uh, equality objective at the 104.50. Only a move through 109.50 would delay uh, these targets and suggest then the potential uh, that we trade and make another test at 110 for taking another leg lower. In Australia, uh, markets are closed for a public holiday on Monday and then on Wednesday we get Q1 CPI. Um, Q4 was up on the, the drought obviously, uh, petrol and tobacco were all uh, expected to show an increase. However, uh, Q1 falls in petrol and holidays while housing is likely to be broadly flat. So core inflation is going to be subdued. Weak wages and soft housing um, are not going to be helping that, uh, that print. Uh, and the six month annualized pace probably slows uh, somewhere to 1.4%. Um, on Thursday, we get uh, March private sector credit probably on a firmer footing in Q1 ahead of the COVID-led slowdown to follow. We also get Q1 import price index. Uh, prices generally higher on the lower Aussie and fuel prices are down as well. We also get Q1 export price index. Prices up on a lower Aussie. Uh, commodity prices flat in terms of US dollars. Then on Friday, we get the April AIG PMI manufacturing uh, spiked in February uh, by 9.4 points on its on essentials um we're looking for that to that reading to reverse um sharply um and that's all in terms of data from australia next week with respect to the australian dollar 
um, continues to find support at the 63 level and uh, a strong close on Friday. If we can take out the uh, Thursday's highs at 64, look for a retest of 64.50, en route to multiple equality objectives now at this 67 handle, also the 78.6% retracement of the entire decline. Finally, uh, the Canadian dollar, in terms of the Canadian uh, economic data slate next week, uh, all the focus really is going to be on Friday's uh, manufacturing PMI, which is set to fall sharply really in line with, uh, with global manufacturing prints. From a technical perspective, um, we got a bearish reversal confirmation on Thursday. Uh, we didn't get really to see any follow through on Friday, but if we can take out those Thursday lows, then look for a move down to test the 138 area, which is the 50% retracement of the, uh, the March rise and also the uh, initial equality objective um, versus this swing high here, um, the late uh, on the 21st of April. However, uh, if we get through the, the 138 handle, then we still have the primary equality objective, which is sighted down at the 135.96. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 27th of April.